The 911 debuted in the 1960s and stays true to its roots as the quintessential sports car. A rear-mounted 370-horsepower twin-turbo 3.0-liter flat-6 powers the rear wheels. S models make 420 horsepower, the GTS makes 450. The T-Trim has the base engine, but sheds excess weight. A 7-speed manual is standard, all-wheel drive and a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic are options. In coupe, convertible, or targa form, the 911 is as luxurious as it is sure-footed, making even novices feel like racing legends. Not just a Carrera. For those who don't yet know the meanings of the suffixes added to our subject 911, here's a quick primer. Targa has historically been a body style positioned between a coupe and a convertible, and this generation features a nifty power retractable roof that's sure to delight onlookers. The 4 designates that this 911 is equipped with all-wheel drive, there are no rear-wheel drive 911 Targas, and the GTS moniker signifies a high-performance trim with a delectable set of upgrades, including more power and torque for the twin-turbocharged 3.0-liter flat-6 for totals of 450 horsepower and 405 pounds to foot, a tighter chassis setup, performance features that are options on lesser 911s, numerous bits of dark exterior trim, and desirable interior items including micro suede upholstery. Now that we've tested nearly every variant released thus far in the 991.2 generation of Porsche's iconic sports car, this particular target didn't produce many surprises at the track. Weighing in at 3,591 pounds, this seven-speed manual example sprinted from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, just 0.1 second off the pace of a 296-pound lighter, rear-wheel drive GTS manual coupe, and cleared the quarter mile in just 11.9 seconds at 118 miles per hour. This target also barely outran a rear-wheel drive GTS manual cabriolet, which clocked 3.6 and 12.0 seconds in those same metrics. Its skid pad result of 1.09 grams is the highest of the GTS models we've run, and its 148 foot stop from 70 miles per hour is only a few feet off the coupe and convertible versions marks, all wore the same Pirelli P0 summer tires. Rear wheel drive, PDK equipped 911 GTS models have turned in significantly quicker times in our hands, both the coupe and the cabriolet needed just 3.0 seconds to 60 miles per hour and 11.3 seconds in the quarter, but the 7-speed manual's positive shift engagement and forgiving clutch make quite an argument for shifting for yourself. We also enjoy Porsche's rev matching capability that comes online in the sport driving mode, at least aside from full attack situations, where we prefer to handle heel and toe in on our own. This function can be disabled in the car's individual driving mode. As is often the case with the test cars Porsche sends our way, part of the fun involves perusing the options sheet. Because the GTS comes standard with plenty of performance goodies including a retuned suspension, the aforementioned power boost, and the Sport Chrono package, this particular car was lightly optioned, with only $14,255 in extra equipment, yes, we consider that amount light in Porsche world. The list starts with $3,850 for leather upholstery, which combines with the standard micro suede, then adds $4,120 for a GTS interior package with contrast stitching, embroider GTS logos for the headrests and floor mats, bits of carbon fiber trim, and a contrast colored tachometer, another $2,090 for rear wheel steering. $3,345 for 18-way power sport seats with memory and heating, and $850 for a standalone blind spot monitoring system. The $153,505 total of our test car doesn't strike us as outrageous, relatively, of course, given the Targa 4 GTS's luscious combination of a versatile roof, all-wheel drive, a plethora of standard equipment, somewhat distinctive looks, and highly capable performance. But then again, it doesn't really matter if this particular 911 strikes your fancy, because Porsche's seemingly endless number of combinations mean that you can easily carve out a personal 911 sweet spot that's all your own.